Growing up, my favorite television shows were The Little House on the Prairie and The Brady Bunch. But The Brady Bunch was my absolute favorite. In fact, I even thought I was the seventh Brady kid. I had a theme song and everything. I'm not gonna sing it because I'm not a singer. But those were the shows that I watched growing up in my island back home in the Caribbean. Those were the American shows that we got. I am Carrie Ann Zamore, the granddaughter of a fisherman, Sherrod Zamore, the granddaughter of the village baker, Denise Zamore, and my family owned the village store. Everyone in my village was somehow considered a part of our family. So the first 11 years of my life, I grew up in the small leeward Lesser Antilles Island of Dominica. <sighs> but I still watch those American shows. So at 11 years old, when I discovered that we were moving to America, I was elated. Finally, I was going to be an American kid like Laura Ingalls and like Marsha Brady. But in 1985, when we landed in Baltimore, Washington International Airport, America was nothing like what I saw on television. In fact, there was no little house on the prairie. In fact, there wasn't even a prairie in sight. And I quickly found out I was definitely not the seventh Brady kid. At 11 years old, I was already two years ahead of my peers academically, so I was placed in the eighth grade. We were completing an exam. I don't even remember what the exam was about, but I do remember the demographic form that we needed to complete. I was given a number two pencil and a Scantron form. Does anybody remember the Scantrons? Or am I just showing my age? <laughs> All right. And so it was, it was pretty simple, right? So I filled out my name, bubbled it in, filled out my date of birth and bubbled it in, and my new American address and bubbled it in. But then I stopped suddenly, because there was these series of boxes I had never encountered before. These boxes said Caucasian, Asian, Hispanic, and African American. I sat frozen, unsure of what to do, because see, back home in Dominica, we didn't have a box check-in system. We were all Dominican. No matter what the hue or complexion were, we were all Dominican. So I sat confused, looking at the boxes. I looked at the first box, Caucasian, and I thought of Marsha Brady. Yeah, that wasn't me. I looked at the second box, Asian, and I remembered the shows that my uncle watched with Bruce Lee. Yeah, that wasn't me either. And then I looked at the third box and it said Hispanic, but I remembered my history lessons of the conquistadores and the Castellanos from Spain. Yeah, that wasn't me either. But this African-American box was still a puzzle. See, in my 11-year-old brain, I'd never been to Africa and I was pretty new at this American thing. So how could I be African-American? I sat at my desk with my number two pencil hanging over my Scantron in a confused limbo. My teacher must have seen my confusion because she walked over to me and leaned. Check the box. Just check the box. But which one? I looked up at her, my brown eyes filling with tears, and she looked back at me, her blue eyes equally confused. Then she did something that would change the way that I saw myself for years to come. She took the number two pencil from my hand and she checked African American, sat down, sat the pencil down and walked away. I sat frozen, unsure of what to do next. In one single action of checking a box, I had lost my culture, I lost my language, I lost my human experiences. I had lost my family. I had lost the essence of who I was by the very definition of African-American. But how do I become African-American when I'm new to this country? I don't understand the culture. I don't understand the lingo, the dress, the hairstyles, the music. I'd never heard rap before. I didn't understand losing the essence of being a Dominican girl and becoming African-American. 
See, when we diminish human experiences, then we devalue each other and it leaves a great divide. Our culture shapes the way that we socialize, work, and play. It also shapes the way that we see ourselves and how we see others and interact with others. I have now been in America for over 35 years, and I am a proud African-American woman of color of Dominican descent and culture. Very long, but it's who I am. In speaking to a lot of my adult friends who migrated to America as children, like I did, I have found that their experiences were very similar to mine. My Asian, Central America, South America, African friends, actually from the continent of Africa, and my Caribbean friends all felt a piece of shedding who we were, the essence of who we were, to assimilate and become American. So how? How do we change the narrative and bridge this divide? I'm glad you asked. Brene Brown suggests that it is through human connection. She, she suggests that it is through accepting and allowing human experiences. But race, in the idea of a social construct, dividing individuals on color is divisive in its very nature. This is why I'm going to focus on culture, because culture and race are different. I have two ideas for you. Just two. And this is the class I wish my parents had before we migrated to America. So I'm speaking to the parents of immigrant children. Send us protective messages as we bridge the gap of coming to America and learning this American culture. Learn this American culture with us because it is challenging. Immigrant parents continue to hold us to the high standards that you have set for us, but also realize it may ostracize us from our American peers. And so we need additional support from you and from the educators. Immigrant parents be involved in the schools to let the teachers know what exactly your child, us, we are learning or what we have learned in our formative years back home and what we learn at home. The second call is for you. It's for me. It's for us. This is away from the parents. This is where we are intentional, deliberate in our motivation to change. This is holding conversations with each other this is actually having conversations across the table, inviting someone to your home, having conversations in the grocery store. If you don't understand the food, I promise you it's okay to ask. And say, what food is this? How do you cook it? How do you eat it? Tell me about your culture. It's having those courageous conversations, and it sounds so simple, doesn't it? Yet it is the hardest thing for us to do as human beings is to reach across the table and have those conversations. And because I practice what I preach, this is something I did in my human diversity class at the university where I teach. I teach at a, at a predominantly white university, and I'm one of very, very few African-American uh, professors. In my human diversity class, I walked in and noticed a diverse group of students who had never communicated with each other. So I did something different. Instead of introducing myself and going over the syllabus, I said, I am the granddaughter of a fisherman. I am the granddaughter of a baker. I am the daughter of a computer tech guru and serial entrepreneur. I am the daughter of a teacher. I am the wife of a 28-year military veteran. I am a mother of three sons. I am a social worker. I am a clinician. I am a playwright. I am an author. I am the daughter of the island of Dominica in the Leeward Islands in the middle of the Caribbean Sea, and I am your professor. I did that for the first two classes, and then I gave my students some homework for them to come up with their own human experiences and introduce themselves to the class, not by their name or their race or, their, or their, even their gender, 
but by human experiences. I sat back and I watched. My students who had never spoken to each other before, I watched them laugh. I watched excitement. I watched human connection. I dare, dare I say that we try it. The idea is if at least one of us or all of us in this room today meet someone different and actually be intentional in listening to understand, to learn, you will find that we are so much more similar than we are different. I'm Dr. Zamore, and this has been my human experience. Thank you.